Greetings and welcome. This is a response to Jordan Maxwell's posting on the Heavenly Mana or the Hidden Mana, for which I have a website called HeavenlyManna.com. This is Matholomew, and I'm posting in response to Jordan Maxwell's oh, attempt to tell us what the truth is about psilocybin and about sacred mushrooms in Jewish history. The fact is that the Jews who ate manna in the desert for 40 years for breakfast, lunch, and dinner did not eat a psilocybin mushroom for 40 years. Try imagining what that would be. Any of you who have taken a gram, even just a couple of caps of these mushrooms know it's an intense experience and it, and it draws, it drains you. It's, uh, it, it empowers you but it also drains you. There's no way that any humans could eat 40 days, uh, 40 years worth of mushrooms for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The manna that's described is a precursor to prepare the Israelites for the hidden manna, for the heavenly manna, for the actual manna that Moses certainly knew, that Aaron certainly knew, that certain Hebrews knew. They were always trying to draw the people to pick the bluing mushrooms. But the one which sprang up overnight, they got maggots. That one was just a mushroom. A lot of protein, um, certainly good for sustaining health, but it's not a, a psychedelic mushroom. To eat psilocybin mushrooms for 40 years, day in, day out, would definitely drive you crazy. I know people who tried to eat it for eight days straight, and they went crazy. Uh, unless you have a really good relationship with the Lord, you couldn't possibly do that. And if you had that kind of relationship, you'd be a Moses-like character, not like the Israelites who really went astray in the end. Also note that Jordan Maxwell shows a Manita Muscaria, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For a reference on that, see the book, um, let's see, where is that book? Plants of the Gods, here. This book, and on this page, Plants of the Gods shows Amanita muscaria, this mushroom, as the tree of knowledge of good and evil, as described by the Christians themselves in a 12th century fresco uh, in the French tradition. You can see it here. That's Eve, and that's the tree of knowledge there with the serpent entwined. That's not the same thing as the tree of life. Psilocybin, the bluing mushroom, not the same as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So when he talks about the high priest going out and gathering that mushroom, uh, no, sorry. They wore blue robes, all blue, with golden bells attached, and they had to have cattle pastures around the Levite tribe's settlements. Cattle pastures are where the psilocybin cubinesis grow best. Um, so distinguish, discern, understand there's a difference between the tree of knowledge which has one attribute that Pharaoh in Egypt liked and the tree of, of life which has a different attribute. It brings about the conscience or the Christ-like awareness of right and wrong, of good and evil, of good action and the other. That I think is pretty good clarity on the subject for more information on psilocybin particularly but on the pantheon of psychedelics in general, look to the videos that I've produced under the name Matholomew, M-A-T-T-H-A-L-A-M-E-W, and on the website heavenlymana.com, H-E-A-V-E-N-L-Y-M-A-N-N-A.com. And don't feel like you're wasting your time because you're looking up the information which relates to the hidden manna of revelations forth which the church will be poured out with the Holy Spirit and have great power in the last days of revelations or so accords, so accords John in revelations as he speaks about the tree of life and the hidden manna. God bless and good night.